just reverse in there, there wasn't in our songbook, so you all did very well to keep up with that. You've got to keep you on your toes on a Sunday morning, can't we? So that was brilliant. So the announcements for this week, uh, Sunday and Thursday meetings are the same at 11 o'clock. Uh, last week I mentioned we're looking for September for some big collection ideas. Obviously everything's going to be done slightly differently again this year. So we'd like to see ideas from the community as to ways we can raise money for the big collection. The big collection money goes to various projects that are run across the Salvation Army in the UK. So things like prisons, children's work, hostels, homelessness, all of those projects that don't come out of cause and have separate budgets, all this money goes in to support those. So if you have any ideas, you may fancy doing a sponsored walk, some baking, some drawing, um, you may, however you want to raise money, please have a, a chat with us so we can get some ideas. And that will need to run through September, so you may want to do a one-off thing. Um, I know people have suggested coffee mornings and afternoon teas, so we're looking at those different things. But please just come and speak to us and we'll see what we can do. Um, this was in your Sunday link last week, but for those who haven't seen it, we are looking for people to do some first aid training. So if you'd like to be a first aider for the Corps, um, we will need to have people for varying programmes. So um, if you are in a programme and would like to be a first aider, we are going to be doing some first aid training very soon. So please let me know. And in the same breath, we're needing fire wardens. So if you'd like to be a fire warden and have fire warden training, that's a little bit of an easier training. That's an online course for about 20, 25 minutes. Um, and you get a nice little vest that says fire warden. So if we have, if the alarm goes off, you get to usher us all out the building. So if you'd like to be a fire warden as well, please have a chat with us um, and we can get you that information. Um, this was mentioned a few weeks ago, but we're going to keep plugging it. If you shop at Tesco, uh, if you're making purchases at Tesco, we've got the trolley tokens going in, and we're the middle one, uh, but there are three wonderful charities there, um, so that if you can uh, ask for a token, if you're not given one when you make a purchase, um, and the more we get, however we rank, depends on what the donation Tesco will give us. So uh, keep plugging away, get your friends and family to make sure they get a token and support any of those three charities but we are the middle one, so just make sure <laughs> uh, we're in that one there. Um, and just uh, for those who weren't here last week, um, Chris and I have family, we've got family visiting this morning, but we also have family visiting for the next week. So we are working in between, but we have got a few days off um, to go and visit places. So um, if you do need us, please leave a message on the call mobile or drop us an email and we will get back to you. If it is an emergency, I say, you know, if the hall is on fire, just ring the fire brigade, there's not much we can do. <laughs> so um, please do that and we'll uh, address those different things. So that is the end of the announcements and I'm now going to pass on to Chris who's going to lead our message. Thank you very much. So we're going to turn back to in your Bibles if you want to, to Joshua 2, um, which if it was a core Bible, is page 216 as we consider some thoughts on that for today. So we're continuing this great story of the exile out of Egypt that we've been doing for a while now. Last Sunday, Faith led you, and I heard you considered the change in leadership as Moses stepped down as a leader, he passed away and was promoted to glory, and Joshua had to stand up to lead the formation. And in that Joshua 1, he was given a strict commandment to be strong and courageous. That's what God said to Joshua. And I don't know if Joshua wasn't listening, because a few verses later he said, be strong and courageous. And if he still didn't get the message about what they were going to do and what they would face, he says the message again, be strong and courageous. And he needed that message going forward as to where we were and going into chapter 2 as we do today. So in chapter 2, which Faith read to us a moment ago, they're preparing to take the land. And you might be forgiven here for having a bit of deja vu. You see, once again, they've sent spies into the land to see what it's like 35, 30 odd years later. And I wonder how it might have changed. A few weeks ago, we considered how the 12 spies in Numbers 13 were sent into the land and to see what it was like. When they looked at the land, they looked at the great rewards. It was flowing with milk and honey. 
but so too were the obstacles. The people in the land looked like giants. Only two spies of the twelve, Caleb and Joshua, thought they could do it. You now contrast that mission into this land with this mission in Joshua 2. This time, instead of sending in 12 spies, Joshua only sends in two. I'm sure they would have heard from Joshua the same message he'd heard from God. Be strong and courageous on your journey. The time for taking the land seems to be upon them, but already there seems to be danger. They've been tasked with that spying the whole land, and particularly the city of Jericho, we read in verse 1. This seems to be the next target for the Israelite army as they slowly begin the occupation of the land. But things aren't easy for these spies. The whole city seems to be aware that their spies might be on the way. They are on the lookout. The king has heard of spies entering the land and has got guards watching out. It's only in verse 2 we see the king has already been tipped off. He and his men are outside the building these spies are in. They're questioning the owner as to their knowledge of the whereabouts. So great is the king's fear and that he pursues his false lead, taking his men out of the city to try to stop these two individuals from reporting to this army. Joshua has done this kind of mission before. Similar to this one he sent the spies on. He's told them, I would assume, to be strong and courageous. They know God is with them. But I wonder how they were feeling. Deep in a fortified city. People hunting for them, just outside the door, banging on the door not knowing if you're going to be turned over to the king as you hide for fear of your life on the rooftop. The consequences if they were caught for both the spies and for Rahab, you can imagine would be severe. I wonder how you would act in that situation if what would have been the things going through your mind? You know, as Christians, we're not promised that we're not going to be subject to dangerous situations. Though I dare say most of us have probably never had to hide for our lives on the top of a rooftop. But how far would you be willing to go to carry out God's will? We're told as Christians we are to go and tell us the good news of Jesus that he is the Lord, that we are all sinners, that we are in desperate, desperate need of a saviour. And we are told that we need to tell people that Jesus is such a saviour. That people need to turn to him. And when they do so, their lives can be made new. Their life can be made whole. Their life here and now and their eternal life rests upon hearing it. We can see in the New Testament and throughout history and today in other countries, Christians are willing to die to proclaim this message. How far would you be willing to spread the gospel? Would you be willing to risk your own life? The length these spies are into? Or perhaps be ridiculed? Perhaps feel uncomfortable in a situation? The situations we face may not be the same. It might just be a few raised eyebrows we get, or a funny look. But the consequence to those hearing it could mean the difference to their eternity. When we contrast the story in Joshua 2, when he sends in two spies, to the story we read in Numbers 13 and weeks, a few weeks ago. There's a difference, a few differences we note. One of them is the spies are never named 
and Joshua too. It's not like Numbers 13 where everyone gets a name and their dad and which tribe they're from and everyone else. It's not like Joshua and Caleb, we know are the main spies that said, we can do this, we've got this lights. So in Joshua 2, the writer isn't drawing our attention to this. In fact, the, the spies in Joshua 2, their choice of lodging, where they go to seek shelter, we could question their motives for doing this. This too isn't about the king. He doesn't even get a mention by name, even though he speaks. The only person that is mentioned, besides Joshua at the start and the end, is Rahab. That is who the story focuses on, who we are drawn to as we read it. But who is Rahab? In terms of her background, she is not seen high in society, particularly in her day. She is a woman, she is a Canaanite, she is a prostitute, she is an outsider, a nobody. In one sense, she lives very literally on the edge of society, on the city wall, which would be crucial to the spy's escape. But this could also mirror how she felt, how she finds herself fitting into that society on the outskirts. Her lifestyle, we would condemn. Her choices in this tale put us in an ethical pickle. She is found lying to the king. She stows away traitors and she gives away information that would allow her city to burn, to save her own skin and her family. However, Rahab feared God. She recognised him as Lord. Listen to how she talks to the spies in verses 9 to 11. She says this, I know the Lord has given you this land, and that a great fear of you has fallen upon us, so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea, for when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to Sihon and Og, and the two kings of the Amorites of the east of the Jordan, who you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear, and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God, in heaven above, and he is God on earth below. Here, in Rahab, is a woman of faith, from the most unlikeliest of places. Here is a woman that fears the Lord, that recognises the miracles he's done in the past, and has no other choice but to call him Lord. I wonder, do you feel sometimes a little like Rahab? Someone that feels on the outside of society, not included in the inner circles, living on the very edge of society itself. Rahab had faith in God. She trusted the spies over her own city's king. We see what God can do with someone like Rahab, how he can bring about his plan, his actions in a mighty way. Rahab would go on to help the spies escape. They would report to Joshua what the city was like. The people would use this information to invade the land. And friends, I promise you, we are getting to that. They will look at that next week. She would be someone who, although unlikely candidate, although the unlikely candidate, would be remembered in Israel's history forever. Even in the New Testament, we see she finds a place in the genealogy of Jesus, one of only two women mentioned in Matthew 1. So great is her importance. My message to you today, friends, is God uses who he chooses. They may seem unlikely to us, but he uses them to give him glory. Perhaps you can think of reasons, things that are stopping you from doing God's will. Things that you might feel put you on the edge of society, where you feel there might be more suitable people to do things. 
You might feel like you're an outsider, someone no one wants to listen to you. Perhaps you too have a questionable background, done things you aren't proud of. And friends, that is every Christian. If you look to your left, to your right, behind you, the very message of Christianity is we are all sinners. We've all done things we're not proud of. So if you are someone that feels like that today, God can use you. We have seen what God can do with someone like Rahab. What could God do with someone like you? What is holding you back today? God does not see the same barriers we see. We probably wouldn't have chosen Rahab in that story, but God did. Friends, let your whole life be one that you allow God to use to give him glory. Let your whole life be one for God. As we come and we have moments of quiet just now, moments where we are allowed to reflect, we're going to use Psalm 568. And it's a song of response. It's a song that invites us to say, No, I'm not going to let these barriers hold me back. No, I'm not going to say, no more, God, I can't do it because. But Lord, I want to say, all that I am, all I can be, all that I have, all that is me, accept and use, Lord, as you would choose, Lord, right now today. Friends, as we sing this song, I invite you to respond as God leads. If you feel him thumping in your heart, if you feel you have to come, to our place of prayer, which is always open, and respond to God today to say, Yes, Lord, or accept all there is of me. Use everything I have, every passion, every skill. Take everything I'm dreaming of, Lord. I give it all to your will. I give it all to you, come what may. Respond to God today as we sing. I. We're in 68.